Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us here on this Monday, August 3rd, as we gather in prayer. And as we have continued to do, we pause for a moment now at this 9 o'clock hour to, to bring into prayer, uh, to be in solidarity with all those who are suffering with COVID, perhaps uh, most especially those who most recently diagnosed and, and struggling uh, with this virus, with this disease across our community and our nation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Gathered as God's people, the people whom God loves and looks upon with his great mercy, we come into the presence of God's mercy this day, asking for his pardon, his peace, his grace, his grace and his strength. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fifth month of the fourth year, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azur from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years I will restore to this place all the vessels of the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place to Babylon. And I will bring back to this place Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the exiles of Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. The prophet Jeremiah answered the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people assembled in the house of the Lord and said, Amen. Thus may the Lord do. May he fulfill the things you have prophesied by bringing the vessel of the house of the Lord and all the exiles back to Babylon to this place. But now, listen to what I'm about to state in your hearing, in the hearing of all the people. From of old, the prophets who were before you and me prophesied war, woe, and pestilence against many lands and mighty kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace is recognized as truly sent by the Lord, only when his prophetic prediction is fulfilled. Thereupon the prophet Hananiah took the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it, and said in the presence of all the people, Thus says the Lord, Even so, within two years I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from off the neck of all the nations. At that, the prophet Jeremiah went away. Sometime after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go tell Hananiah this. Thus says the Lord, By breaking a wooden yoke, you forge an iron yoke. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, A yoke of iron I will place on the necks of all these nations serving Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon and they shall serve him, even the beasts of the field I give him. To the prophet 
Hananiah, the prophet Jeremiah said, Hear this, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, and you have raised false confidence in his people. For this, says the Lord, I will dispatch you from the face of the earth. This very year you shall die, because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. That same year, in the seventh month, Hananiah the prophet died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, teach me your statutes. Lord, teach me your statutes. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. Lord, Lord teach, teach me your statutes. statutes. Take not the word of truth from my mouth, for in your ordinances is my hope. Lord, Lord teach, teach me your statutes. statutes. But those turn to me who fear you and acknowledge your decrees. Lord, Lord, teach me your statutes. Let my heart be perfect in your statutes, that I be not put to shame. Lord, Lord teach, teach me your, your statutes. statutes. Sinners wait to destroy me, but I pay heed to your decrees. Lord, Lord teach, teach me your statutes. statutes. From your ordinances I turn not away, for you have instructed me. Lord, Lord teach, teach me your, your statutes. statutes. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side of the sea while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. After making the crossing, they came to land at Gennesaret. When the men of that place recognized him, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought to him all those who were sick and begged him that they might touch only the tassel of his cloak. As many as touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Father Kevin, Zach, and I have been remarking that time has been going so, so very fast. We don't even know where July has gone. And in thinking about this kind of time, uh, kind of time expansion that we've been in, I'd be thinking back in light of this uh, gospel today, in light of Peter's actions, about a particular image that was very helpful for me uh, during my vocational discernment, as uh, uh, in the years that I was discerning uh, going to seminary and becoming a priest. And, it was quite simply this image. It was, a, it was a line in a vocational book that said, God can't move a parked car. That is, if I, as the discerner, who, whichever one of us is, is in a position of discerning, of, of seeking where God is calling us, and we're just sitting in the car, in park, well, God can't probably do too much with that as we're just kind of sitting there, maybe immersed in our own thoughts and our own ideas. We need to take some sort of step, some sort of action, some sort of movement in response to where it is that God's calling us to continue to discern, to 
to, to actively search out where it is that, that God is in our life and where he is sending us, where he's calling us. So God can't do too much with a parked car. And I think that comes to mind as we look at Peter. As Peter shows us this, this courageous, bold witness in, in the face of a great trouble and challenge here on these high seas, this great storm. And Peter has the faith to take that step in faith towards Christ. As Christ says, come, come, come to me. And, and Peter makes that step, that first step towards Christ. I think quite simply that is, that is what you and I are called to do. And there's, there's many different ways, each, uh, each of us in our own unique ways, that we can do this, that we can take these continued steps, these first steps in faith towards Christ, who calls us, who loves us, who guides us. It might be particularly in these troubling times that that, that, that step of faith for us is simply a little bit more trust in Christ. Christ, whom we know is, is in control. God is in charge. Could be the, the first little step of, of reconciling with somebody that we are in need of reconciling with or offering forgiveness, taking that step of forgiveness with Christ. It could be taking a little bit of time as a, as a step forward in our faith to learn a little bit more about our faith, to enrich ourselves in our, in our understanding and our knowledge of our faith. It could be a first step, perhaps a continued step with Christ, towards Christ, in recognizing the dignity and the respect of all human life, of all peoples. Many different ways that we can take these, these first steps, these continued steps in faith towards Christ. In, in what is a troubled environment for us, what is challenging, very much like this stormy sea that the disciples find themselves on. And yes, we know we, we might falter. We might falter like Peter. We keep our eyes fixed on Christ. Knowing that, as we heard in, in this Sunday's Gospel, that as, as we give our little bit, our, our, our little bit of loaves, our little bit of fish, as we heard in that story, that God takes that, God receives it, and he brings, and he can bring much out of that offering, out of our first steps, out of our continued steps in faith towards Christ. Continue the walking in faith and trust with Christ. We now bring to him our prayers and our petitions this day. For our church, may the Lord raise up holy men and women to humbly labor on her behalf. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may our God of justice guide them in working for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely or homebound, may Jesus' healing and, co and consoling hand be upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may God's word continue to guide us in truth and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, may the Lord welcome them into the fullness of the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ralph and Dolphy, the special intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those prayers and petitions which we hold and now bring before the Lord in the silence of our hearts this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we seek to follow you in faith, to reach out so that we might be more faithful, lifelong disciples of you. Give us grace and strength so that we might be the people that you call us to be amidst of this world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance that they provide may not fail us in body, or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, their gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us now bow for each other some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, the only one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, and only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. in our Eucharistic faith, let us now pray this prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before we prepare to depart, uh, this is the day uh, we've been dreading. Uh, Zach Watson is, uh, is departing from us here, is uh, going back to his uh, home parish 
uh, up in Hartford County today uh, once more. Uh, I think on behalf of Father Kevin, I want to say it's been a, a, a pleasure to have Zach with us uh, in this very unusual summer. Oh, he's going to make an appearance. You want him to say something? That's up to you. Okay. <laughs> but it's been it's been wonderful to have Zach with it uh, with us here. Uh, we hope he's going to be able to come back and visit us when we are in in some sort of a better sort of normal <laughs> operating capacity. Um, but Zach. Uh, Love having you here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, your flexibility, your your uh, your willingness to participate uh, in in sort of these uh, these COVID operations <laughs> here at the parish. Um, and we we loved having you here. Anything else you want to add? That's good. That seems very good. good. Okay. <laughs> Zach, anything else? No, just mm -hmm. thank you both. It's been a great summer. I'm gonna miss it here. So. <laughs> oh. Thank you all. It could be your pastor one day. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> And so the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day, everyone.